How do you find a good church? This is a concern that I've faced many times and no doubt many of you have as well. If you're new to a community and you're looking for a place to worship, what kind of questions do you ask when you walk into a congregation for the first time or maybe the second or third time? What's in the back of your mind? What's in the forefront of your mind as far as what is important to look for in the worship and kind of the culture of the local congregations? Well, I'm going to put forward a series of about seven different questions that I like to ask myself and perhaps you would like to ask yourself as well. When you're trying to discern if this congregation or that congregation is the place where God wants you to find a church home. Now, the first of these is actually not just first in number, but it's first in priority. It's really going to weave its way through all the other questions. And it is this. How much is the worship and the life and the teaching of the church centered in Christ crucified and risen for you? Because let me tell you, if you're not hearing about Christ crucified and risen for you in the teachings and the preachings of the church, then leave. There's no reason for you to be here. If you're not hearing about the good news of what God has done for you in Jesus Christ, then there's really no purpose in being in church. It's not a place just for socializing. It's not a place just for education, but it's a place where God gives you his gifts in Jesus Christ. And so that has to be preeminent in your concerns. Is Christ for you being preached? Well, that's the first question. That's the overarching question, but it leads to other questions as well. And the second one I like to ask is, what is this church teaching and preaching is wrong with you? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you will encounter religious institutions, we'll call them churches, which basically teach that what's wrong with us is that we are, we're basically good people, but we have some deficiencies. And if we just try harder, if we get some religious knowledge pressed into our brains, then we'll be on the right track and everything will be okay. Really what we need is just a little bit of Bible teaching, uh, a little bit of perhaps psychology, perhaps sociology, perhaps something else, and then we'll be set. Really, all that's wrong with us is a deficiency of knowledge. And if that knowledge is given to us in the form of Bible teaching or something like that, then we'll be good. Now, in such a church, I would leave. There's no way that I would remain there. Why? Because what this church teaches is wrong with me is itself deficient. What is wrong with me? What is wrong with you? What do the scriptures teach is wrong with us? Well, it teaches that we are by nature children of wrath, that we are dead by nature in our sins and our transgressions, and that there's nothing that we can do, nothing that we ourselves can do to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and to get ourselves right with God. The disease that is within us is far too serious and far too deadly for us to kind of self-medicate ourselves out of the situation in which we find ourselves. We need help from outside. In fact, we need more than help from outside. We need God to step in and to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We don't need for us to meet God halfway, as it were. We do our part and God does his part. We don't have the wherewithal in order to accomplish that. What we need, because of what's wrong with us, is for God to save us. We need for God to redeem us. We need for God to come to us who are dead in our trespasses and sins and make us alive with Christ. We need God to come to us and to give us the gifts of Jesus. And so what does the church teach is wrong with you? That is going to determine exactly what God does to take care of that problem. So that leads us into the third question. What does this church teach and preach about what God has done and is doing to speak to the problem that we have? And this gets us into basically the two different ways that God speaks to us. God speaks to us in law and he speaks to us in gospel. So if what's wrong with us is that we have no spiritual life in and of ourselves. If what's wrong with us is we are dead in our trespasses and sins, then what we need on the one hand is for the teaching and the preaching of the church to point that out to us, to point out how we have failed to keep God's law, to point out how we are dead in our trespasses and sins, and to do that by the preaching of the law. God is just. He has 
requirements. He has commands. And these aren't just merely suggestions. This is what God says you must do, you must not do. And so as the church teaches the law, it points out to us in the form of kind of a diagnosis what is wrong with us. It points out our sin. It points out our depravity. It points out our self-centeredness. It points out that we are curved in on ourselves. And it points us out in such a way as to not say to us, if you just try hard enough, you'll be able to fix the situation. No, the law demands perfection of us. And so the law's purpose is to point out our sin, to reveal the will of God to us, and to make us aware of the fact that there's nothing that we can do whatsoever to save ourselves. And we don't need to hear this just one time. This needs to be an ongoing proclamation that we hear, the message of the law, which shows us our sin, which accuses us, which makes us come to the hard realization that we need God 100%. That's one way in which the churches address what's wrong with us. And the second way, and the most important way, is for once the law is preached, for the gospel, the good news of our salvation, our forgiveness, our peace, our life in Jesus to be preached to us. That when the law accuses us of our sin, the gospel is preached to say, you are forgiven in Jesus Christ. He has reconciled you to the Father, and there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The gospel is God's good news for you, that Jesus has taken all of your sins upon himself, and he's given to you his righteousness. Now, when we're hearing the law preached, and when we're hearing the gospel preached, we're hearing what we need to hear because of what is wrong with us. And so one leads to the other. What's wrong with us is serious, serious beyond our comprehension. And we need the law preached to us in order to point that out so we realize our need. We are called to repentance and confession. And then we need that followed up by the gospel being preached to us. Now, if you're in a church and you're hearing primarily law, or if you're hearing law preached in such a way that it seems doable, that if I just try hard enough, that I'm just devoted enough, I'm, I can keep God's law, then I wouldn't be going to that church. Because when the law is preached, it needs to be preached in all of its severity, all of its sternness, so that we realize the desperate situation that we're in. And I also wouldn't go to a church where I'm not hearing the gospel every Sunday, not just on occasion, not just, you know, every, every quarter we're going to throw in some gospel. I also don't need the gospel to be kind of the PS at the end of every sermon. Oh, by the way, Jesus loves you and he forgives you after 15 or 20 or 30 minutes of law preaching. No, we need to hear the gospel over and over because we live by that gospel. It is the good news of God preaching Jesus to us and giving us all of his, all of his gifts. Now, another question that I would ask is this. What does the church teach and practice? Not just teach, but what does the church teach and practice about the Bible? The church that I'm looking for doesn't teach that the Bible simply contains the Word of God. But it's, you know, the Word of God mixed with a lot of falsehoods or imperfections or, or whatever it might be. I'm looking for a church which teaches that the Bible is, in fact, God's living voice speaking to us in the here and now. That when we hear the Word of God, we're hearing God speak to us. And I'm not just looking for something which, in which that particular teaching is in the confessions of the church or the constitution of the church or whatever it might be. What does the church teach and practice concerning the Scriptures? So are the Scriptures at the very center of the church's life? Are you hearing the Bible read in church? Are you hearing the Bible preached in church? Is, are there opportunities for further study of the Bible in Bible classes on Sunday or during the week or whenever it might be? So I'm looking for a church in which kind of the culture of that congregation is grounded upon the Scriptures, the Scriptures which are held up to be, in fact, the living voice of God speaking to us in the here and now. And there's plenty of congregations out there which give lip service to the centrality of the scriptures. But if you really begin to pay attention to what's going on in the church, well, there's a lot more teaching about politics. Or there's a lot more teaching about just basically kind of self-help and not the scriptures. So I'm looking for a church that doesn't simply say, yes, indeed, the Bible is the inspired word of God. I'm looking for a church that takes that seriously and puts that into practice so that 
the church's life is centered around what God has said to us and not whatever the latest cultural fad is or whatever the latest sociological movement might be or whatever might be taking the place of the scriptures. Another question I'd like to ask myself is, is the church somehow confessing and celebrating its connection to the church of previous generations? Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we are living with centuries, two millennia of church history behind us. And this history is not simply just history, but it's our history. It's the church's history. So is there some way in which a church, this congregation that, that I'm looking at, is there some way in which it confesses and celebrates the fact that the church didn't originate in the mid-1800s or in the 1500s or whenever it might be, whatever historical point we want to point to? Is there in the church's life a, a very deep appreciation for and an expression of the church's connection to that history. Now, this might take the form, for instance, of confessing the creeds of the church, in particular the Nicene Creed. Is the church acknowledging in its worship life, in its teaching, in its practice, that it's not a novelty, it's not something which came about recently, but rather is the life of this church rooted in the history of the church? so that it doesn't see itself as finally kind of coming up by means of some new revelation what the church should be and what the church should confess. We are standing on the shoulders of giants. We have inherited all of the, the, the teachings and the confessions of the church throughout the ages. And so I'm looking for a congregation which is rooted in that history, which is acknowledging, is confessing that history, and letting that history in which all the various teachings of the church have been confessed, have been clarified, have been put down in creedal form. I'm looking for a church which confesses that and celebrates that, and not something which is just kind of new and innovative and really is disconnected from the longer, broader history of the church. And then kind of in conformity with this, is the congregation which I'm looking at somehow connected to a larger body of congregations? Is it kind of a lone ranger congregation? Is it just kind of standing alone and doing, it, doing its own thing? Uh, a congregation that is completely separated from the rest of the body of Christ? Or is it in some way connected to a larger body? Now, I'm not saying that in, in, in every, every single circumstance, a standalone congregation is necessarily wrong. But it is certainly open to all kinds of errors. It's also open to its leadership doing something which is disconnected from the scriptures and from the history of the church. I would like to see this congregation part of a larger body so that, well, first of all, there's accountability, that it's connected to these other congregations, that it sees itself not as an, as an island, but as a continent. It's part of a larger group of churches in order that we might encourage one another, pray for one another, that there might be a, a commonality of confession between this congregation and other congregations as well. And then with regard to worship itself, and this is the, 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 my, main, my last main point, is the, is, is the worship of this congregation just basically entertainment dressed up in a religious drag? That might be one way to put it. Or is it in fact reverential, Jesus-centered worship? Because I've experienced in congregations worship, so-called, which is just basically nothing more than uh, the latest cultural kind of entertainment with some religious language thrown in. That is not worship. What I'm looking for is worship that is reverential. I'm looking for worship that is centered upon Christ. I'm looking for worship that is truly worship. So when I, when I go to a congregation, when I visit a congregation, do I, one way, one, way to, one way to put it might be, do I feel like I'm more of a, a spectator? Or do I feel like I'm a worshiper standing with the worshipers? When I visit this congregation, do, does it feel more like a concert in which I'm just being entertained? Or is it a true worshiping congregation in which we are praying together, singing together, worshiping together before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Now, certainly there are other practical concerns that you might wonder about a congregation as to whether it is a fit for you. You might be asking yourself, well, 
how close is it to my home? <laughs> because the closer the congregation is to your home, the, well, the, the greater chances are that you're actually going to be active in the life of that church. Maybe you're a family with small children. That, that's a concern. And if you have churches A, B, and C, which all of which seem to be a, a possible fit, but only one of these has a number of, of youth and activities for the youth, well, then maybe that's the direction you're going to lean so that your, church, so that your children can also be an, an active part of the church's life. And are there opportunities for service to this congregation? Are there opportunities for, for further study, for deepening your, your, your knowledge of the scriptures? All of those are legitimate questions to ask as well. But those first seven questions, I think, are really the ones that, that I like to ask and that are going to help me to determine whether this congregation is the congregation that I want to call home or not. And maybe there's other questions that you, that you want to ask, and feel free to add these in the, in the comment section so that uh, I and others can can. Uh, benefit from those as well. But that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a Christ-centered congregation. I'm looking for one that is biblically grounded. I'm looking for one that is historically rooted. And I'm looking for one that is characterized by worship and not by entertainment. So hopefully that is helpful to you as you're looking for a good church, a church which is healthy, a church which is centered upon the gospel, a church which is all about all about Christ. And if you are, not just going to thinking about this, but actually living this and looking for a congregation, then I pray that the Spirit would direct you to that congregation so that you might be part of the body of Christ in that place and receive the benefits that God wants to give to you in Jesus Christ among His people, redeemed and forgiven by the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, then subscribe to the channel, give me a like and a follow, share it with your friends, and I pray that the Lord's peace may be yours in abundance.